Gone's Odds with Todd Furman, who's back in his Las Vegas basement after joining us here in studio last week. And before I get to Todd and how much he enjoyed his Canadian vacation, I should mention that, yes, I did change back into the suit I was wearing on yesterday's show uh, as kind of a sign of respect to Todd. Uh, Todd, it's great to see you. How was the rest of your Canadian vacation? Uh, everything was outstanding, Jay, as most do when they come to the Great White North for vacation. Uh, I spent the entire time in a hockey rink watching multiple youth hockey games. Now, fortunately, I was with the parents of those youth players. There's nothing nefarious going on, no reason to raise the red flags in any capacity. But it was good to see a return to my youth and that hockey is alive and well in the great province of Ontario. Unfortunately for me, uh, I watched Team Canada Red beat up on a lot of my state-sized brethren. So it was a bit bittersweet in that regard. Ah, that's music to our ears, Todd. You're the best. Todd, uh, this is the last time we get to chat with you before week one of the National Football League season. So I wanted to go through uh, some NFL futures with you. Bet you'd make right now before the odds change. We're going to start with the divisions. Is there a team that you would hop on six weeks out of the season to win their division in the National Football League? So, Jay, when you look at some of these division odds, I think it's human nature for people to gravitate towards making a case for the favorite. But I think what often gets lost in the shuffle in the NFL, it's not a question of who the healthiest team is going into the season. It's the team that can withstand an injury or two to some of their key positional players. Uh, and for me, I go through the divisions and I look to try and find a team that I think is somewhat vulnerable. So it leads me to the NFC West. And I actually think the price tag available on the Rams at north of three to one and if you want a little bit more of a long shot with that first-year head coach bump in the Seattle Seahawks at 7.5, I think both of those teams are going to give the 49ers all they can handle and then some where there's smoke, there's fire. And quite frankly, I worry a little bit about this Brandon Ayuk distraction and what that receiving core will look like. So I think the 49ers a little bit vulnerable as an odds-on favorite in the NFC West. FanDuel also has odds as to which team will have the best record in the National Football League and which team would have the worst record in the National Football League. The Chiefs are the favorite to have the best record. The Patriots, oh, how the mighty have fallen. They are the favorite to have the worst record in the NFL. Do you, Todd Furman, feel that that will actually play out? Will those, will those two teams have the best and worst records in the NFL? You do have to wonder, Jay, if Bill Belichick is laughing at what has become of the once proud Patriots as he takes his year off to pursue outside interests and to figure out if he'll be back in the game in 2025. But uh, I don't like the Patriots in that market. The price is too short, the same way it is for the Chiefs to have the best record. But a team in the worst record market that I think is intriguing is in the AFC West. And while a lot of people have the Denver Broncos forecasted to finish last, I think the Raiders price tag at 16 to 1 is intriguing. I know the Raiders played hard down the stretch for Antonio Pierce, but I look at this roster from top to bottom. We know the rumor mill is swirling about Devontae Adams potentially being reunited with Aaron Rodgers. A quarterback situation that's Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew appears to be a bit unsettled. And while I think the defense will be fine, I just worry about this group's ability to score game in, game out. It's always dangerous to tempt my fate with the black hole living in Las Vegas, but I think the price tag is 16-1 to for the Raiders to have the worst record in the league is mildly intriguing a handful of weeks before the season starts. Todd, are there any teams uh, over under on the win total that you would be interested in grabbing right now? You know, Jay, I feel it's a perfect week uh, to talk about a team near and dear to one of our former Fox colleagues' hearts. Uh, and that, of course, was the Dallas Cowboys. I look at the Cowboys total sitting at 10 and a half. You do have to lay a price to go under. But I look at what Dallas did, or I should say didn't do this offseason, and I have some real concerns about their ability to win 11 games or more. It's an offensive line that's going to look a lot different. It's a team that really lacks weapons, specifically in the backfield. And I think the defense, to some extent, overachieved last year. So I think the Cowboys find themselves underwhelming coming into the 24-25 season. I'll take them under their posted win total. And, of course, the former Fox colleague of Todd's and myself, is Skip Bayless, who's currently unemployed. And Skip, if you're watching, we'd love to have you on the show if you need the work. Finally, Todd, uh, for those that don't remember, Todd, not a huge fan of Super Bowl picks. Doesn't like to make the Super Bowl picks this far out of the season. But, you know, people change. A lot can happen in a year. Uh, Todd's uh, come up to Canada. He's traveled. He's a new person now. Todd, is there a team you'd be willing to place a bet on right now 
to win the big one in February 2025, I should mention the Chiefs and 49ers are currently the co-favorites, according to FanDuel. It may be a softer, gentler version of me, Jay, now before football season starts, uh, although it is a little bit bittersweet that I can't reach out and shake your hand for this week's segment like I could last week. And we're going to go right back to playing the elimination game in terms of trying to figure out which team won't win the Super Bowl uh, this upcoming season. When we talk hockey futures, I am more than happy to pick teams early on, and we were able to capitalize on the Panthers. But I'll give you a team that I think a lot of people – feel is going to be in the NFC playoff picture. I'm going to tell you right now, the reason I'm going under 10 and a half with the Dallas Cowboys is I think this is a team that's going to have a long uphill battle all season long in the NFC East. So in our first elimination game of the 24-25 season, I'm here to tell you, Jay, that the Dallas Cowboys will not win the Super Bowl and Jerry Jones may have to wait till his 100th birthday to find a chance for that big star in Big D to break. Todd, first... Skip Bayless's show is canceled. Then you drive a knife through his heart by saying the Cowboys will not be getting to the Super Bowl in February 2025. Uh, hopefully Skip's okay. He'll have to hang out with Ernestine a little bit more. But I just wanted to say, Todd, we love having you. Hope you have a terrific summer, and we'll speak to you in September as we get ready for the NFL season. Thanks so much for being on the show, bud. Always a pleasure. Jay, enjoy your time off. The Merchant Marines will be thrilled to have you for a four to five week stint of you pretending to do manual labor.